had to. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest I would just had to come in time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is Sheds for Jesus, That the project that you were talking about? Oh, uh, those were those little sheds. Oh, uh huh. That ended up in 2,500 sheds being built. Wow. Well, about how many people would stay in, in those kind of sheds? Family of five. You said you have a list of all the people that, that have come to you needing help? And yeah, right now. most important that people take back from visiting here from their experiences the most actually the most important thing that any of us who come down here uh, can offer these families is to go back home and share their experiences uh, share what they've seen uh, your group has now become witnesses to f for these families yeah. uh, and to be their voice there is still a lot of need there's still a lot of brokenness here uh, there's still a lot of people wondering if they'll ever be able to get back into a normal home uh, that's the biggest gift that we can give these these families and all uh, to let others around the country know that, you know, it's two years plus after the storm, almost two and a half years after the storm, and uh, the, the the recovery period uh, is has hardly even begun mm -hmm. at all. Uh, for many of the families, uh, for the 17,000 families that are still living in FEMA campers, FEMA trailers, and all. Uh, families like uh, Bauer, this family here, they're the lucky ones, and all, because uh, they know that they're gonna get back into a home soon. They walk out of their FEMA trailer, and they can see that there's a home there, and all, to replace the, the home that they lost. You know, uh, for all of those that are still in the FEMA parks, FEMA campers, and all, they walk out and it's an empty lot that they walk out of. Uh, they walk out, you know, losing the, their history, mm -hmm. their family heirlooms, uh, you know, and you know, just simple things like family photographs of the, the kids or, or whatever. All of that is lost. And uh, people, you know, people just don't realize at all, you know, uh, the struggles that many of these families face, you know, the aggravation that many of these families face, you know, uh, paying insurance for 20, 30 years and not receiving a 
just a settlement with the insurance mm-hmm. company. You know, um, you know the, that's a story in itself, but, you know. And we've talked to a few people about that. You know, yeah, it, it a adds, lot of people. It mm-hmm. adds frustration, mm-hmm. you know, because when Hugo came through South Carolina, the insurance were fair uh, with the families, and they were able to begin to rebuild you know, that's the difference between this disaster and many other disasters that have happened at all, is that, sure, this was large in scope, but without the funding uh, or the insurance money, then these families can't begin to re- rebuild at all, you know, uh, for all of the homes that have been built this past summer and, and since the storm, uh, it's only a handful. Uh, the total number of houses uh, is, you know, less than a thousand built by the volunteer groups in this one county. Now, a thousand is a, a large number at all, uh, but when you equate that to the 24,000 families who homeless and, and lost everything. You know, that's that's a drop in the bucket. The challenges are long. You know, and like I said, the greatest gift that you guys can do is share. Mm-hmm. You know, share this experience with other people. Uh, you know, and you know, let people know that hey, you know, it's it's a lot cleaner. There's not as much muck and mud laying everywhere now. Uh, the trees are green, uh, but at the same time, there's there's you know still a lot of struggles you know, mm-hmm. day by day for many of these families. You know, uh, marriages get you know breaking up. You know, uh, it just goes on and on. Many of these residents here are angry. Frustrated or upset, and all, just because they feel abandoned. Yeah. And all, for all the work that has been done, uh, it's been done with many of us working together. You know, uh, most of the, the groups here, we all pretty much work together, share resources when we can. Uh, you know, the resources, the availability is so low and then the need is so high Mm -hmm. Um, and now uh, now uh, the greatest need is is volunteers skilled volunteers retirees to come and share their knowledge to help guide the, the younger inexperienced people you know, as they come down uh, to maximize and utilize the uh, precious resources that we have, and materials, you know, which is so few, you know, to properly install it so that it doesn't get wasted. You know. uh, and, you know, when we do a job, we want to make sure that we do the job right. You know, when we build a home, we want to make sure that we build uh, a home that's going to last the next storm. Uh, you know, and we don't want to uh, build substandard homes. Um, you know, so uh, that's that's the greatest good. You know, in Maryland, I'm sure that there's hundreds of retirees. You know. Mm-hmm. You know, it gets cold up in Maryland in the wintertime. It's, you know, it's pretty nice down here. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, we have a lot of sunny days. You know, and what better way to spend your winter? Mm-hmm. I'm going to share what I've learned and try to um, make a documentary sort of thing to just let other people, as many people as we can, know, know about what's going on. And, uh, and that's, that's very important. Reaches more people and all than I can reach talking one by one, one by one, you know. Uh, and for
for each of the groups that come through here. I share the same message which, with each of them. That's what keeps this ball rolling. That's what keeps the volunteers coming back. Uh, you know. I think the kids will have a lot of people to share their stories with too. Yeah. They, they seem to have really enjoyed it. I, so. I have I have numbers of friends all over the country and all into Canada and, and around the world that I've met. And uh, I have called on them from time to time, you know, uh, for, you know, things that I know that uh, is either in their business or in their trade. Sometimes, uh, you know, uh, we have special families with special needs, you know, uh, and so uh, it, uh, it becomes, you know, uh, one of those things that, you know, to keep in touch, you know, uh, now, future disasters. Um, there hasn't been a tornado or fire that I haven't known somebody to go help out mm -hmm. at all. Uh, and groups and to report back how, you know, uh, the recovery in, in that area is coming along. You know, uh, you know, I mean, people from here, people from around the country, you know, they go to uh, Greenbrier, Kansas, and call me up saying, how do I know I'm here and this is what I see. Mm -hmm. um, so you've created a sort of ripple it's, effect? It's, it's a network. Mm -hmm. It's a network, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we realize that the storms and the natural disasters and all, uh, they're not going to get any better. Mm -hmm. They're going to happen with more frequency, you know. Fiercer in size, you know, uh, and it's, you know, uh, we see that daily, you know, you know, and it doesn't matter. People say, well, why don't these people just leave? You know, well, this is their home. Yeah. You know, they've lived here for generations. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, and so, if they're going to do that, you know, where are they going to go? to the earthquakes in California, the fires in California, mm -hmm. you know, the cold blizzards, you know, up north, yeah. you know, doesn't matter, you know, even mm -hmm. the east coast, you know, we get the hurricanes up there, so you can't run. <laughs> My name is Carolyn Bowers, and I'm a survivor.